Old Henry is easily one of the best new westerns to release in years. So let's take a look at 20 things you didn't know about this simple but superb movie, such as why Tim Blake Nelson was so good with a gun, the hidden references to classic westerns you missed, and why the movie might actually be the start of a larger trilogy. So let's get started. Now, given the overall quality of Old Henry, you might expect the director behind the scenes to be a seasoned pro. However, filmmaker Pozzi Ponzaroli had not actually directed a feature film before Old Henry, having spent most of his career shooting commercials and music videos for the likes of Luke Bryan, Cage the Elephant, and many more. Although he did direct a short-lived Billy Ray Cyrus sitcom called Steal the King, but it was canceled after just two seasons. So Old Henry was arguably his first big test as a director. And I would say that he passed it with flying colors, as he's now in high demand across Hollywood with multiple producers and executives reaching out to him for meetings, all because of the success of Old Henry. So one of the best things about Old Henry was the casting of Tim Blake Nelson in the titular role. And when the actor read the script for the first time, he found himself immediately drawn to the project for two very personal reasons. The first was because he had always loved westerns ever since he was a kid, having been introduced to film as an art form by the work of Sergio Leone. So he really appreciated the unapologetically traditional and violent approach that the director was taking with Old Henry. And the second big reason he loved the script was because at its heart, it was the story of a father and his son, which he could really relate to on a personal level, being a dad himself. So given how much Tim Blake Nelson loves westerns, it's no surprise that he's appeared in quite a few of them. In fact, prior to his starring role in Old Henry, the actor had actually already appeared in four westerns, including Dead Man's Hand, The Homesman, Klondike, and The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. So Tim Blake Nelson was not the only western veteran to appear in Old Henry due to the casting of Trace Adkins as Al. Because although Trace Adkins is probably best known as a country music singer, he somehow found the time to appear in a crazy amount of Western movies, including Stagecoach, Traded, The Virginian, Among Wolves, and many, many more, as well as hosting a reality TV show called Ultimate Cowboy Showdown. Another highlight of Old Henry was the character of Curry, played by Scott Hayes, who's probably best known for his roles in Venom and Jurassic World Dominion. In fact, it was while he was shooting the latter that he got a call from Tim Blake Nelson, who suggested that he read the script for Old Henry, given that they'd already previously worked together on the 2013 film Child of God. So following this, Hayes read the script and immediately fell in love with it, bagging the role of Curry shortly after. As mentioned earlier, a big reason why Tim Blake Nelson wanted to work on Old Henry was because he could relate to the father-son dynamic that was a huge focus of the film. But this connection was made all the more real for the actor by the fact that his son, Henry Max Nelson, was actually present on set, working as an art production assistant. And he's actually since gone on to direct his own film called A Sleep in My Palm, which prominently features his father. So you only need to look at box office flops like The Latest Mission Impossible or Killers of the Flower Moon to see just how badly the pandemic hit movies that entered production around that time. But oddly enough, Old Henry might be one of the few films that was actually improved by COVID delays because it afforded Tim Blake Nelson an extra six months to prepare for his role. And in that time, the actor spent hours upon hours on the phone with the director, going over the script in detail, while doing lots of research into Billy the Kid. He also spent months getting his body physically prepared for the movie to ensure that he could pass for a convincing farmer and gunslinger. And it's pretty clear that all this extra effort paid off in the final film. So during all this extra time that Tim Blake Nelson had to think about the film, he began to worry that maybe his past Western roles would actually negatively impact Old Henry. Because just a few years prior, the actor had starred in The Ballad of Buster Scruggs as a larger-than-life gunslinger that was essentially the complete opposite of Henry, leading the actor to question whether audiences might find his casting jarring. So he agreed with the director that in the movie, Henry would perform no pistol tricks, despite it arguably making sense for his character to do so, just to make sure that his performance didn't remind anyone of his role as Buster Scruggs. However, he did concede to performing one pistol spin at the end of the movie, just to honor the history of Billy the Kid. 
Tim Blake Nelson did also include one other small gun flourish in the movie in the way that he hands a gun to Curry. However, this was a very deliberate homage to John Wayne, who does the exact same thing with his gun in Rio Bravo, which was the sort of traditional classic western that inspired Old Henry. Another famous western that Tim Blake Nelson took inspiration from was the Kevin Costner movie Open Range, specifically the gunfight at the climax of the movie. This scene taught the actor that in reality, a duel in the Wild West was a lot messier and open than most westerns would have you believe, given that they weren't really so much about the quick draw, but rather the act of exposing yourself long enough to get a beat on your opponent without getting shot in the process. So this thinking was applied to many of the shootouts in Old Henry, including the final gunfight between Henry and Ketchum. So Old Henry actually has a direct link to 1993's Tombstone that almost nobody is likely to notice. Because in the movie, the character of Curry is shown to be in a constant state of bad health, which required some seriously good makeup to appear convincing. So veteran makeup artist David Arthurton was deemed the man for the job, considering his previous work on Dances with Wolves and The Homesman, but specifically Tombstone, given that he was responsible for the sickly appearance of Val Kilmer as the character of Doc Holliday. Easily one of the best scenes in the movie is when Henry finally takes up arms and dons his hat to confront the outlaws attacking his home. And it turns out that a lot of effort was put into finding just the right hat for the scene, as the director wanted it to closely match the one worn by the real Billy the Kid in the few photos that exist of him, making his identity reveal all the more impactful for those who know their history. Also, by the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, it would be great if you could leave it a like, just to help it reach more people. So thank you, as always, and let's get back to it. So although a lot is made of the big Billy the Kid reveal, the truth about Henry's identity is actually teased multiple times before this moment. One of these hints comes when Wyatt goes poking for his father's belongings, discovering newspaper clippings that refer to the Lincoln County War, a conflict between farmers and ranchers in New Mexico in which Billy the Kid served as an enforcer, known as a regulator. The clippings also mention Pat Garrett, the real-life lawman responsible for supposedly killing Billy the Kid in New Mexico, where the outlaw committed most of his crimes. And this is actually referenced by Ketchum when he recalls hearing about a man called McCarty who once caused trouble in New Mexico, as Henry McCarty was actually the real name of Billy the Kid, often disguised by his alias of William H. Bonney. Despite all the love and care that went into Old Henry, a few mistakes did still manage to make it into the finished film, but perhaps the most notable comes right at the end of the movie. Because as Henry runs from the farm, if you look to the sky, you can actually spot the trail of a plane flying overhead. Another odd feature of the film that's easy to miss but kind of hard to unsee is that Old Henry is one of the very few movies in history that features absolutely no women on screen, directly or in the background. In fact, the only reference to a woman in the whole movie is Henry's deceased wife. So another great scene in the movie is the cat and mouse sequence between Henry and the men searching for him in the wheat field. And this scene in particular was actually the director's favourite, and the one that he was most proud of, despite it never actually appearing in the initial script. Because originally, the scene was supposed to take place in a completely different location, with Henry hiding behind trees and rocks. But when Ponzaroli came across the wheat field on location, he completely reworked the scene, knowing that it would add a whole new level of tension to the sequence. Even though Old Henry was a fairly modest and simple indie western that you probably wouldn't expect to have much traction, it actually ended up being somewhat of a surprise hit, receiving positive reviews and strong word of mouth while grossing over $40 million at the box office. It then featured in the National Board of Review's Top 10 Independent Films list of 2021, and was later named amongst Barack Obama's favourite movies of that year, all helping to expose Old Henry to a larger audience, with many film fans agreeing that it's one of the best westerns to release in years. So naturally, given how big of a hit Old Henry proved to be, many fans have wondered if there might be a sequel. But obviously, the ending of the movie and the nature of its true story makes a direct sequel very unlikely, if not impossible. 
However, director Pozzi Ponzaroli has reportedly already been approached by multiple producers and executives wondering if he'd be interested in making another western. And the director apparently responded, I will do another western down the road, just not as my next movie. So although there are no plans for Old Henry 2 as of yet, it's possible we will see a new western from the same director sometime in the near future. One other encouraging thing to remember for those hoping for more westerns like Old Henry is that the movie is actually one of three, already confirmed to be in the works. Because when Old Henry was first announced, it was part of a larger movie production partnership between Shout Studios and Hideout Pictures, a production company partly founded by Pozzi Ponzaroli himself. So alongside Old Henry, two more westerns have already been announced, called Hardin and Four Dead in Five Seconds, the first of which spotlights the true story of outlaw John Wesley Hardin, while the second will chronicle the infamous El Paso, Texas gunfight. So in theory, Old Henry is essentially the start of a series of similar westerns inspired by real-life figures and events from the Wild West. But for those hoping for more stories focused around Billy the Kid, you'll be happy to hear that Old Henry appears to have kicked off a trend around the famous gunslinger, with multiple new projects about him now in the works. These include a multi-season TV show from MGM, an upcoming Netflix series called The Abandons, a new feature-length biopic starring Barry Keoghan, and the very real possibility of a third and final Young Guns movie. But putting all that aside, let me know below what do you think it was that made Old Henry work so well? And while you're here, you might also want to check out this video right here.